beautiful South Florida. There's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today we hit week 10, and we've got a good one in store between the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. The shadow's starting to get a bit longer. Week 10 of the NFL season is here, and we're underway on EA Sports. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Hey, both you. Hey, Red. No, Red. Once again, it's Mostert, and he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. That was fine. They're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Tua looking to throw on third and two. On the right side open is Gesicki. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Only able to gain a couple there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. Time play. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Taken in at the three. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10. At their own 18. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. This defense for the Dolphins, they put together a strong effort last week in the win over Chicago. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. Drops it off for Chubb. 
A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. You know it was tough for them to stand on the sidelines and watch the other team take it downfield and score, wasn't it? So they knew when they got on the field, it's on them. Pick up first downs, get downfield and score. How about them picking up that third and short? I was just going to say, you and I were talking before the game, those third down conversions are going to be huge in this one. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Credit Melvin Ingram, able to get into the backfield and make the stop. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Off of play action, it's Watson. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And a third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. Just a net of 34 there, following a punt of 44 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they entered play on a two-game win streak, and then they've got the open date on their schedule next week. So this is a group that's really looking to hit the break on a high note. And this will obviously be a tough game for them, but go ahead and play this out with me, partner. If they win here and make it three in a row, they get to heal up after that. You've got to think that's an ideal setup and a worthy goal to play for in this one. Throwing on second down, Tua. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. They come up to the line now, facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Someone sharp in this game. He had a touchdown pass in the first drive. He comes right back. And he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him. And I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. The Dolphins at 8-1 one on the year and they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victories CD and I thought that they played pretty well last week their execution their discipline their resilience all on display in that victory the last run good for two here's second and eight off a of play action tongue of my low and the Browns pressure gets to him that time and he's gonna go down in for the sack, Miles Garrett. Well, they certainly took too long to set up play action, and that gave the pass rush time to get home for its first sack of the game. For their sake, they may start to think about the quick game and leave play action alone for a little while.
6-0 our score after one. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Black open. Tongue of I low to throw. Got a man, it's Waddle complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 37. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep with the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. And cycle. Ready? On play action, here's Tua. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jacob Phillips came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. He only gave them an instant to react. It was a classic case of if you blink, you missed him. Off of the line and to the quarterback in just a couple of seconds. Running back only had a moment to react and attempt to throw a block. And that is incomplete. Well, partner, guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. The Dolphins on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and 19. Now Tua. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Chewing up big yardage, another nice game there. This one goes for 20. Here's Mostert. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. One more time with Moster. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Tua sets up to pass it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. Sanders' kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they set up for just the field goal. I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made 
made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. They had a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Brown's drive about to get started. Three and five is where they sit on the year. A very uneven start. It's certainly not an ideal position to be in at the halfway point of the season. I mean, CD, do you see an avenue where they can still be a playoff team, or is that ship sailed? Well, since you took me to the nautical side, I'm going to try and keep up here because, to me, this ship is about ready to pull out of port. These next couple of games are absolute must-wins for them. Now, if they can win a couple, get to five and five, Maybe they start believing in themselves, but a loss here, that would move them to three and six. And if that's the case, well, that boat is going to head out to the harbor with them still on the dock. Looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jerome Baker, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. He got outside the pocket there trying to improvise, and he was calling for the ball downfield, but still the interception. I think what happened, he did call for the ball thinking that he was open, but I think the quarterback spotted him too late, and that margin that he had on the defenders, that got eaten up, and they came up with the interception. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. Now this time, two is going to throw it. And that will be incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. Sanders' kick is good. So that Charles, a season long right there. And you know, I'm really excited about that. The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame, this is what we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it. And he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. drive about to get started it hasn't gone particularly well for them that's obvious in these conditions no points so far they've got to get that offense on track the question how do they do it it is the age-old question isn't it and to me finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic meaning you don't have to go deep down the field 
Maybe hit them on the short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. The throw down the field caught by his running back. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's... And a big loss here as he's taken down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Throwing on second and long. Watson. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Watson. And that is incomplete. Like what I've seen so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Two and now on first down. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've go. got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both these teams getting a chance to dry out, maybe change their cleats if need be. But halftime's just about over. Time to get back to it. And for the call of the second half, here's Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. 
The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. Well, the passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top-10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. Throwing on third down, Watson. That's going to be caught along the sideline, and what a job of keeping his feet in bounds. They say that's a catch. Just what the Browns needed there, good for a gain of 17. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Back to throw, Watson. Dancing to his left. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Throwing on second and long. Watson, man open, that's Anthony Schwartz. They get 11 back on that one, it leads to third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Watson. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 34-yard line. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. Watson, a little touch pass on the jet sweep. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. Watson looks to throw again. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Partner, there's a downside to everything, and the danger of man coverage is if you're locking down your target, you often turn your back to the quarterback, and you don't see him. Sometimes you open up a big lane for him to hit you for big yardage, and that was an astute play by him to scramble out, see that lane, and burn that for a first down. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on second and three. Watson. Touchdown, Browns! Donovan Peoples-Jones, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns are back within a score. Footing always a concern, but the extra point's up and good. And this is back to a five-point game. 
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back-and-forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. But I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. To throw again on second down. Tua. He rifles one that's intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And the return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. Okay, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from a defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. Oh, felt like that move deserved more than he got there. A gain of two. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They run it again with Chubb. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll try the air now with Watson. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Running for it, here's Chubb. Oh, what a move. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Watson now to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Watson. 
He'll find Schwartz complete right side. So the completion results there in nine yards. Third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Turn to the ground game, Chubb. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Desperation time. Watson on fourth down. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And he's brought down. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Chubb will score. Touchdown, Cleveland. A late turnover is so often the difference in a ball game, and here the turnover leads to the go-ahead touchdown. So repeat after me, partner. You have to take care of the football. In order to protect the lead, you must take care of the football. Ball security. How many times do they have to say it? They've been preaching it since day one of camp, and it came back to bite them right there. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. yellow. Hey, hey, move. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Two are going to throw. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 27-yard line. That's good for 28 yards. So a first and 10 upcoming from Browns' territory now at the 27. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Tackle made there by Miles Garrett. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. Red, go! 
On second and nine, Tua finds Hill on the crossing route, complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 12-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert, and he is going to lose yardage here. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. tight end Mike Kosicki the completion was given up but that's why you play zone defense so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch Coming and they need eight yards on third down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Tongue of Iloa. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Now Tua. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Tua. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. How about the call to come with the blitz there in this situation? And some of those calls happen just because of what they do on offense. So when they send out a number of people in the pattern, sometimes they'll just make a change on defense. Say, okay, we'll come after you instead. And that's exactly what they did. Ball at the six, third and goal. They'll run with Mostert, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Four yards, that gets him close to the goal line, but it also brings up a fourth and goal. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And this one is right through. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So in a driving rain, he steps up, puts it through just like he's practicing in a gym somewhere. How about that? Any little slip in this weather is going to throw him off. 
He stepped up there like it was perfect conditions, took dead aim, and knocked it through. The Browns drive about to get started. As the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Dolphins are going to hang on on the final play. They get the turnover to seal this football game. And we all just got a heck of a show, partner. This was a close game for a long time. Close at half, close down the stretch. Home team finds a way to get it done. A narrow victory. Yeah, they finished with a flourish, didn't they? Because there are times where each side looked like they were the better team out there. And the outcome was in doubt for much of this game. Every snap seemingly more important than the previous one. Great effort from the guys visiting. But in the end, how about those guys in their home stadium finding a way to win? So for Miami, the great run they've been on continues as they move to 